Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Regarding immigration, heaven has a wall and it has a gate and a very strict immigration policy. Hell has open borders. So there you are. Let that sink in. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on this Thursday, March 7th. Good morning. And a good morning to you and yours, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell. And good morning to you on a Thursday with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations with a big, big spring tire sale going on right now. And don't forget, too, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our patriot with our pledge of allegiance good morning well good morning sir you're the man yes i thought i'd do it this morning i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Wheels. And right now, let's go to the weather forecast. And it's brought to everybody by KNR Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Hello, Roger and the crew getting there early in the morning at 7 a.m. on the Burley Paul Highway with all the best of tools and equipment that you need to finish any kind of a construction project. Now, for those of us, that maybe like me, you know, I'm not sure what I need to finish things or do things. Hey, Call them, explain it, they can help, they'll give you all the information. K and R Rental, the telephone number to call, six seven eight three one two two. Filling in for Gina, here's Scotty with the weather. More of the wet stuff, but maybe clearing up by the weekend. Good morning with your Seventh Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina Jameson. For today, looking for about a 40% chance of rain, expecting a high around 46. More of the same for tonight with a low of 29 than for tomorrow. Possibility of some snow, highs around 37. Things will be clearing off Friday night. Going to be a little bit breezy, lows around 22. Then on Saturday, mostly sunny, expecting a high of 36. Sunday, mostly sunny. A high of 37. That's your Zeb at the Ranch weather forecast. I'm Scotty K. Uh, thank you very much and brought to everybody by K&R Rental. 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Ah, uh, yes, even though the forecast sounds a little wet and possibly snowy, spring is around the corner. Get ready to finish all those projects. And they've got the best of tools and equipment at K&R Rental. 6783122. Merv May, let's sell some cattle. Come on in here. All right. Hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all our 31 moment of hand, 31 moment of hand, 30. Ah, that's the chant of the world's best dog gone auctioneer, and that's Merv May over at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Sale time today at 1030. Don't you miss it. Today, today, at the sale that works for you. Merv May, Cade, Roggy, and the whole crew, Lance, Udy, they're all there serving you at 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. And here's just on a little bit of a partial list of some of the cattle that we've got going through the ring today. 
Rick Rogers over to Rupert bringing in 50 head of Rippin' Good 600 pounders and another great set of calves coming in from Malda 25 to 30 head of 500 to 600 pound calves. Carl Horn up at Show Shown. Hello, Carl. 25 head of calves coming in. We've got butcher cows from Acme Dairy, Funk Dairy, Antelope Hills Dairy, and like I told you, a great trailer line run. 10.30 is going to be the start time at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley for cattle. Cattle consignments and sale information call 678-9411. Merv, sell those steers. All right. Hey, get set of steer calves there. Here to get all 31, one and a half, 31, one and a half, 32, two and a half, three and a half, 134, four and a half, and five and a half, and a half, 135, 50, 135, and a half, sell them dollar 35. Zep Bell, get the bottom again. I love that chant. Thank you, Merv. Appreciate it. Good morning, everybody, and hope you're having a great day. And, uh, We've got a caller already. I'm just going to quickly tell you, don't forget, we're going to have a Chamber of Commerce report at 9.06. Leiden Crane is going to be giving us that report. And uh, then read at 9.30, we got all kinds of good things. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. It's the Yummy Man from the Burley <laughs> Senior Center with today's menu, which is chili, cornbread, mixed veggies, and... Yummy dessert. I haven't decided yet. Ah, uh, no, no, no. That's the Joe Taylor Day today. When it says they haven't decided yet, then Joe and others are going to have great big ice cream floats. How does that sound? That sounds like a winner. I'm all for it. <laughs> okay, Joe. It's only, only five bucks, and if you're a senior and buy ten tickets at a time, you Get them for four fifty a meal. Oh, well, save money and enjoy great food over at the Burley Senior Center on Overland. Thank you, Joe. God bless you, man. Thanks. Thank you for all you do for All me. right, buddy. Thank you very much. Good man right there, Joe Taylor. And uh, we appreciate him being on our program this morning. Uh, I'm going to take care of a couple of things here, and then we're going to get to some. I've got some stories that we've got to talk about and get your opinion on. Don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. They've got all, all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. All you need to do is just give them a call or stop in. 2600 Overland Avenue is the location. Telephone number to give them a jingle, 678-0459. And they're open 730 to 5 Monday through Friday. Please know that they've got the experienced personnel to serve and help you at Ramsey. Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. Also, want to remind you too that when it comes to really, really good eating and enjoying yourself with nice people, it's all over at Danny's Restaurant, America's Diner at 611 North Overland in Burley. Oh my goodness sakes, that's where we have our Zeb's Lunch Bunch. Wonderful people, Thomas, Michelle, everybody over there really makes a great dining experience, quite frankly. And uh, the menu choices are absolutely delicious. You're going to love it. Denny's Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley, and like I said, another location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. It's true. It's America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant. Uh, to clean up and clarify some of the business that we had on the program yesterday, I had not only Doug Martin call, but I had a couple of other people call me yesterday, and they thought, maybe I didn't really explain about the missing Black Hawk helicopters. I don't know if I did or not. I'm going to have to check the tape. But uh, these people that called thought, oh, they misplaced a Black Hawk helicopter. No. The Defense Department has lost 39 of them. I'm not kidding, folks. I have this right here in front of me, written by the Defense Department. It says, weighing in at well over 10 tons each, Black Hawk helicopters should be pretty hard to misplace. But last January, the Defense, the Defense Department's controller reluctantly reported to Congress that 39... Black Hawk helicopters did not appear in the Army's property assessment tracking system. Now, that's not all. 
And that's not all. Listen to this. And this is why I'm so absolutely adamant that we need to clean house with a big broom and a mop and a sponge and get rid of all these people. The controller added that the Air Force identified 478 structures and buildings at 12 different installations that were not in its real property system. Ah, boy. All those helicopters and all those buildings and structures, where are they? I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was your day to watch them. I don't know where they went. To the tune of billions with a B of dollars. Oh, and that's my money and your money. And they can't find them. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to remember that if you've got an ache or a pain or you're recouping from surgery, whatever the case might be, I urge you to get a hold of my friends, and they are at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Nick Greenwell and the entire staff are outstanding in their knowledge of all the exercises and how to help you get back to being you. All you have to do is give them a call at 678-1191. That number again, 678 one Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, and let them help you get back to being you. Calls are welcome. Come on, don't leave me hanging on a Thursday. I'd love to hear from you. Give me a jingle on the landline at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I want to remind you, too, that uh, irrigation season is literally around the corner. There, you peek around the corner. Oh, there it is. Yep, there's irrigation season. Well, I urge you to get a hold of Jake and the crew over at Rain for Rent at 134 South 600 West of Paul. The number to call, I urge you to write it down and get what your needs are for irrigation this farming season 2019. 438-5065. That number again, 438-5065. They're a Reinke Diamond dealer, and believe me, they are the best dedicated sales and service staff to help you through irrigation season at Rain for Rent. Call them today, 438-5065. Really good people. All right, your turn, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I don't know how many of you had the opportunity to sit and listen to the absolutely disrespectful rants of the Democrats at the hearing yesterday on immigration. I absolutely, it it was appalling. Here sat in the hot seat Department of Homeland Security Secretary Nielsen, And she was fielding questions and comments from Democrats that absolutely should have been slapped in the face. They were disrespectful, they were ignorant, and they chastised her for presenting the facts. I listened intently, and I took notes on what was being done and said. Every single thing that uh, she gave as far as information, I'm talking about Secretary Nielsen, had facts to back it up. There were this many people, there were this many arrests, there were this many families, there were uh, these amount of children, they were having these many people detained. Everything was based upon facts. And the Democrats would have nothing of it. They would not acknowledge that we have a problem. They would not acknowledge that we have a crisis. And they would not acknowledge that we have an emergency. It has been estimated by people that are much more in the know on numbers than I am that we are going to have the possibility, a very strong possibility, of over a million illegal aliens try to bum-rush our border and come in. A million this year. There are answers to the problem, and I'm going to step on some toes here, and so be it. There are answers to the problem 
but no one, Republican or Democrat, has the backbone to do it or say it or prepare a bill for it. Industry, business, all employers, from whether it's the dairy industry or whether it's the resort and hotel industry, I don't care what industry it is, must help solve this problem instead of enlarging it. Now, there are those right now listening that are going, Oh, you can't say that. Yes, I can and I will. We have a problem of people coming into this country that we don't know who they are. We have a problem of our money, your money and my money, being used to help support this problem. And we have people coming into this country that are exacerbating the problems of welfare, etc., with housing, medical aid and supply, everything that you and I cannot afford to keep withstanding more and more numbers every year. It's not at all fair to us, the taxpayers, and it's going to break this country. Now, for those that are aiding and abetting illegal aliens to come in here, it's high time that they are highlighted, spotlighted, and they do something to help alleviate the problem. We have got to come up with some answers, because myself personally as a taxpayer, the answers are that we have to curb all the illegal aliens coming into this country, not only for security means, but also economic means. What are your thoughts on this? Yesterday, as I said, Secretary Nielsen laid it all out about the extreme problems of illegals coming to this country. And as I stated, and right now on the move, they estimate over 700,000 people are going to be coming up here and trying, like I said earlier, in a bum rush to take over our borders and come into this country. What are your thoughts? Call me at 436-2244, 1-866-927-4587. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. You know, you say they're going to break us. I'm kind of curious what your thoughts on a over $22 trillion national debt. We're already broke. I can't argue that point. I don't know how in the world, and you know as well as I do, sir, that there is no way under the current system or the lack of the current system that we're ever going to start uh, minimizing that $22 trillion. It's going to grow. Uh, I anticipate in the next three to four years we're going to be talking about $25 trillion. Uh, numbers are numbers, and they don't care. You give me an answer. How are we going to do it? I don't know. Well, my thoughts are the the place that we should begin is, is with uh, President Trump's original campaign promises to drain the swamp. I don't know why Trump's the only one being investigated. How about any of these politicians that have been in there for 10 years or more, should every one of them be investigated for frauding the American public out of their tax dollars? Because they're the ones that have put us in this mess. And I don't understand why we don't put term limits in place just like we do on the presidency because those Congress people, whether Democrats or Republicans, have all helped create that debt with no answer of any way to pay for it. I never hear them talk of one, one idea on how to pay for anything. It's not increasing the spending. And it, don't, it seems to be bipartisan to me. It's, well, it is. Neither party is doing their job. You're spot on. I mean, everything you're saying, I'm, I'm buying a membership card to your club because I agree with you. I just a few moments ago got done telling you about 39 missing Black Hawk helicopters. That's your money and my money that they wasted and they lost and they don't know where they are. They spent with the Air Force over $10,000 apiece to replace toilet seats covers. The list goes on to the incompetence and the greed and the absolute misuse of our money. I don't know how to clean this up other than going back to Washington and one by one marching them off a plank into the Atlantic Ocean. I am so fed up, including our own representation. Sir, I don't know what to do. I don't. I, I short of having a, a, a lynching without a trial, I'm not sure what the answer is either. <laughs> I'm just dumbfounded. Um, on your show the other day, one of the, the callers mentioned that he didn't understand why none of our Congress people had the gumption to do the right thing. And, and the 
immediate opinion that popped into my mind was because none of them have any um, integrity or ethics. Well, let's There's just no such thing that exists. Let's just talk about. Let's just talk about. Hey, hang on a second. Let, let me just throw this at you quick because I got to be uh, adhered to the clock on the wall here. Um, have you heard comments uh, in the press or on this program or any program from Crapo, Rish, or Simpson about the current problems that are going on back there? Have you heard anything from Mike Simpson in regards to the Islamic problem with those Congresswomen, of which Mike is a part of, uh, about what they said about Israel? No! Why aren't they speaking out? Why aren't they calling us their constituents and letting us know what's going on? They are not doing the job that we hired them for. Absolutely not, and it's, it's sad that the it's sad that, that there aren't a bunch of indictments against all of them. And, and as far as these immigrants, I don't know why we call them immigrants if they're illegally coming into our country. They should be called criminals. Well, and, and the detainment centers should be what they are. There should be prisons, and they shouldn't be great conditions. There should be. There should be every deterrent we can think of to keep people from coming in here illegally. Let me ask you, uh, what, it, without giving away, if you don't want to give me the information, but what do you do for a living? Well, I work in business management. All right. If you don't do your job, you probably will be removed from that job and possibly not very gracefully either. But now here are the politicians, and they're way back there in Washington, D.C., thinking that they're far and away and above our scrutiny, but they're not. Cell phone, and, and I kind of lost you there, but I appreciate you keeping us informed. Keep up the work. God bless you. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, and going a step further, and I appreciate that call. Uh, they're way back in Washington, D.C., and they think they're far and above the hue and the cry of their constituents. I said yesterday to Dave Beagle on the phone, and I meant this, I would love to see a abbreviated schedule for senators and congressmen. I'd love to see them only work six months and really give them a cram c-r-a-m session to where they had to get things done in a short period of time instead of languishing at their big leather soft chairs and doing nothing especially in the case of the democrats that are sitting there right now figuring and devising ways on how to waste more money on investigations and i also said and i'm going to stand behind this i took some ridicule over this yesterday after the program by gutless wonders that don't call during the program i said that i would like to see the senate and the congress move to the midwestern part of our country so that they had to be right in the heartland to face constituents and actually be more under a scrutinizing eye i believe in the midwest than they are on the atlantic coastline i just absolutely think we've got to do something to make these people know that they are not having us work for them they work for us and they're not doing their job. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Caller, I'll be right with you. I just want to be sure and tell everybody, too, about our dear friends at Ag Express. Oh, my goodness sakes, they're looking for drivers. They're looking for mechanics. They're looking for dispatchers. They've got excellent new equipment, full and part-time positions are available. They've got excellent programs with medical and dental and vacation year-round work, you're home every night. What are you waiting for? Call Ag Express right now. Absolutely. Call Tony or Dale over at 438-5025 or in Burley, call Chad at 678-4625 extension 1. Ag Express has got a lot of opportunities for people that want to work, people that want to go on the upswing and do something for them and their families and retired folks are welcome to apply too at Ag Express. They're looking for drivers, they're looking for you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. You know, I'm like you. I'm outraged about a lot of things. We've got so much corruption up there in Washington, and this wall is the big, one of the biggest things. I think what needs to be done, and this might be a little extreme to you, but make the cities that Schumer and uh, Pelosi and some of these other Democrats live in Turn them into sanctuary cities, 
and be invaded by this bunch that's invading our borders. Every mayor of every sanctuary city should be arrested and put up on charges of being against our American Constitution and our laws. I don't care who they are. I don't care what city it is. I am so sick and tired to think that the United States of America, within its borders, is allowing this kind of anti-American activity with sanctuary cities. It absolutely sickens me, and I think every one of them should be arrested. Well... There's a lot of people that won't uh, agree with uh, what I'm saying, is at some point this country is going to be so divided, we won't know which state is that we've got uh, the labels on. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Tony. Tony, wait a minute. At some point, that point is now. I mean, if we're sitting there listening to the Democratic Party and they belittle the Department of Homeland Secu- uh, Security Secretary Nielsen yesterday, and she had all the facts, everything was there on paper as to the arrests and the problems on the border with the Border Patrol. Everything was there in facts, and they belittled her, they antagonized her, they insulted her. We are already split with idiots that are back there in Washington, D.C. Well, we have a third party, a fourth party going on here. we got the Republicans, the Democrats, the Socialists, and the Communist Party. How can we put a stop to it? Well, the American public, you know the answer to your own question. The American public has become so dumbed down and so naive and, yes, one other word, lazy, that we're not taking care of business. We should be standing like the uh, painting of American Gothic with pitchforks in our hand and ready to go down Pennsylvania Avenue. Well, hopefully the American people would uh, start to rebel. I don't see that happening in the near future. It needs to. I don't care if it's a rebellion at the ballot box or whatever. We've got to let our voices be heard. And I, for one, will say this, and many people have called in about this. You take the time and the effort to send a letter to your congressman or senator, and then about two weeks later in the mail, oh, goody, Tony got a form letter. Isn't that just make you feel warm and fuzzy? Well, why don't a couple of hundred of us write letters, we'll put them in a box, we'll send them to you, and then you can mail them out to one uh, senator that you think it isn't doing the job that it should be doing. I can't say one. I can't say one or two. I can say almost all of them aren't doing the job that they should be doing. They should be absolutely in these times of crisis and these times of dilemma in the United States of America. They should be begging to get on the radio, regardless of whether it's this radio station or any radio station, and they should be begging to inform their constituents of what's going on. But all you hear is crickets. They don't do anything. Well, God bless you, uh, Zeb. Uh, I know darn well that you're not going to give in or give up. I can't. Thanks, Tony. God bless you, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Hey, there's going to be a big sale Saturday, and it's going to be the John Hurley Auction, and it's managed by our friends at the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Absolutely. This is going to start at 11 a.m. over in Castle Ford at 3341 North, 900 East, and from the corner, Merck, go south for two and three-quarter miles. Can't miss it. Look, lunch by the Cook Shack. They're going to have all kinds of tractors and a ripping good combine and bean and grain equipment, tillage equipment farm equipment of all kinds all sorts and motorcycles mowers it's all going to be there for you this coming saturday march 9th the john hurley auction and it's going to be over in castle ford look for the signs and it's managed by the bennett boys auction service no sale too big no sale too small the bennett boys they sell them all caller good morning you're on the air good morning Zed. how you doing i'm good uh, go ahead sir Hey, uh, uh, we were talking about the helicopters. I had to make a comment about that. You know, that that kind of a test uh, when government gets so big and for those that want to have a, a nationalized health care, uh, you know, can't they see that just, that just caused more problems and and uh, the fact that it would just get too too big, too impersonal, 
for for an individual's health. Absolutely. Let me ask you something. With a one-size-fits-all national health care, to use your terminology, it's been tried in other countries, and it has minimized the value and the worth of medicine and medical care to all patients, whether they go in for a broken leg or whether they're being treated for cancer. You can't have a one-size-fits-all policy. It's not going to work, and people that are in desperate need of quick and very, very serious medical attention are put on the back burner to die. Oh, uh, let me tell you a story. My neighbor, who grew up in Canada but was a U.S. citizen. His family was working up there. His father was working in the in the timber industry up there and eventually was hurt, but uh, lived a long time up there. And then his father, as he got older, had a heart attack. And I can't remember exactly what he told me, whether it was six or nine months. He was on a waiting list in order to go see a doctor for a heart attack. It wasn't a massive heart attack. But if that's how long he had to wait before he could get in to see a doctor. Well, you're just kind of playing into my point. I mean, uh, exactly. I have been talking. I have some health problems that I've had to address, as does my wife. And we have talked to quite a few of the people in the medical profession, and they have told me in no uncertain terms that a one-size-fits-all medical program for our country will not work. Because absolutely, we're looking at the infanticide and the murder of infants on one end of the scale, and we're we're looking to eliminate a lot of the problems with elderly people and their care on the other end of the scale, and then sooner or later you're going to see a depletion of people that really have health problems in the middle. You are looking at nothing more than a hemlock society that's going to be governed by the wingtip shoes and three-piece suits of absolutely stupid politicians. Yeah, and it would just add to our financial debt. Wait, I mean, I, I agree that there are some some revamping that needs to take place in our medical health care, especially with the drug industry. But sure. The, it, it, would, we just, it would just complicate our problems so much more in order to go to that. Well, let me ask you a question. Yesterday on the program, and Wheels, I've got a little feedback on the air here. Uh, yesterday on the program, I had an economist from New Jersey uh, on the program, and we were talking about a trillion dollars. And he was explaining what a trillion dollars is and what it looks like. And then he equated that to now our being in debt, $22 trillion in this country. But the Ocasio-Cortezes and the Kamala Harrises and the other people that want to run for the Democratic side in politics, they're saying that we should go in debt over $100 trillion with their new Green Deal because it's an investment. What do you think about that? I think them people are alien. They have no idea what what they're talking about. I mean, they're so out in left field that left field don't even exist. Yeah, but you got to admit, you got to admit to me, sir, that the problem also is the fact that most people don't take the time to really understand what's being fed to them on the news. And unfortunately, they only have the opportunity, in most cases, a large percentage of the people, only to get their news from ABC, CBS, or NBC, which absolutely is in bed with the liberal Democrats. So how do we solve this problem? Uh, you know... We're headed for bigger problems. I don't, I don't know exactly what they all are. I mean, I, I'm totally behind this president. He's making some great changes, but it is, it is a big problem. Absolutely. Uh, We've got a lot of big problems. Well, I appreciate your call. You took the time to show that you're a patriot and you're concerned, and God bless you, sir, and have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, appreciate that. I want to remind everybody about Barry Equipment and Rental. And by the way, I appreciate my audience. Thank you very much for your calls. Uh, Barry Equipment and Rental, sales, service, and parts. And they have three locations, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. With Juan, there is a good old boy, 465 in Addison Avenue West in Twin. Eli, another good old boy. And then the Napa location. I'm telling you that they are now offering everything at Barry Equipment and Rental for 48 months 
and 0% interest. <laughs> what a financing program. You better stop in today. They've got all the bobcats. They've got just corral full of bobcats, all the different sizes and shapes. And uh, you can check it out for sale or rent. Absolutely at Berry Equipment and Rental. Burley, Twin Falls, and Napa. You stop in and talk to those great folks today. All right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'm just going to come right out and say this, and I hope somebody has the backbone to either agree or disagree with me. Congress is afraid. Our Congress is absolutely afraid of Islam, and they're afraid of Muslims. Now, there are those right here in our community, our Magic Valley, they are going to criticize me for that statement, but I dare them to prove me wrong. Congress right now, because of a word called Islamophobia, is extremely afraid to sanction and or reprimand the congresswoman from Minnesota that came out and made some absolutely heinous remarks regarding our number one Israel in the Middle East, Israel. Our number one ally, pardon me. They're afraid, they're chicken, they're cowards. And this woman is on the Foreign Relations Committee and should not be, she should be removed immediately. But the cowards in Congress are kowtowing with political correctness to Muslims and Islam and all of us are going to suffer and the problem's going to be exacerbated in the future. Caller, good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, Zip. Boy, that was a great lead into what I wanted to say because Islam is a theocracy to conquer and control the world. And it is hiding behind the facade of a religion. And, and so you're absolutely right. Um, you can't make any comments, um, letters to the editor. Um, they won't accept those, any comments like that because it's Islamic phobic. We've got to treat them. And they're trying to do this, combine Christianity and Islam. And Islam, it's like mixing oil and water. In. It, it, it's just totally impossible. The Sharia law is totally opposite our U.S. Constitution. Women have no rights. The genital mutilation, um, I mean, it just goes on and on. Adrian, are you aware? Wait a minute. Adrian, Adrian, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't know if you're aware of this story or not, but you need to be. Did you hear what is going on back in New York City? If you're not, you need to know about this. A group of Muslims in a certain neighborhood in New York City have bought and purchased cars that are exactly like the New York Police Department cars, and they've painted them the exact same color with all the decals and everything, with the exception on the doors, they've got Muslim police instead of NYPD, and they're going around the neighborhood unasked and unwanted by the police department, and they're taking care of community arrests and taking care of supposed uh, violence in their neighborhood. These are Muslims that are superseding the law by having cars that resemble the NYPD. I, I've actually seen that, Zeb. Yeah, it's, it's just incredible that that's going on. But those cars look identical. Yeah, I saw side-by-side pictures, and you couldn't tell one from the other, except if you go get up close. But, you know, if we better wake up, because in the U.S. of A. right now, there are several communities, Dearborn, Michigan, uh, this gal that was uh, Omar, she's elected from St. Paul, Minneapolis area there. They've got these enclaves, and uh, those people all get out and vote. They have lots of kids. The average uh, Muslim male has eight children. That may be by um, three, four, five, five wives, and they have one legal wife. But the whole thing is... The Koran, you know, commands them in over a hundred verse, if we don't convert to their perverted uh, religion or theocracy, then they're commanded to kill us. And they have been doing that. The whole crusade was to bring back Christian territories that the Muslims had slaughtered millions of Christians, and they're doing it today. Still in Syria, the number of Christians there is, is 
down to a, a fourth or less than what it was just a few years ago. The genocide continues, and yet we just turn a blind eye to that. And, of course, Israel is sitting over there. It'd be like Twin Falls County surrounded by all of the air. There's counties of the state and, and everything. And, I mean, you know, we, we've supported them, but, you know, they want to conquer the world, and they will do it if we don't take a stand. Yeah, but wait a minute, Adrian. Adrian, therein, Adrian, therein lies the problem, not just nationally with New York City or maybe Chicago, but right here in Magic Valley. We've got a town called Twin Falls that is so naive and so backward in their thinking that they don't understand what some of the problems are because they want to be so politically correct. They will damn you and I and call us hate mongers and bigots, but they can't see the forest because a tree's in the way. Well, I've testified two different times before the CSI Board of Trustees. I might as well have been talking to a, a brick wall. I mean, they you could tell they weren't listening. They didn't want to listen. But I, I made my speech. I, I prepared it well. I used statistics that from the Pew Research and so forth of how many are already over here that want to kill us, the percentage that want to impose their, their perverted theocracy on us. And yeah, we better wake up pretty dang soon. We're losing it, and uh, and of course you can teach Islam in school, but you can't teach Christianity. That's another thing Obama was able to get in. And of course he was a he was a he was a Muslim himself, and Valerie Jarrett was the real brains behind him. He was just a bobblehead. I got to run and do the weather, Adrian. But I always appreciate your remarks. Thank you, sir. Have a great day, and call again. Thank you. Okay. You bet. Thank you Thank very you. much, and keep up the fight. Thank I will. You. Thank you. You know, there's so much I want to talk about in regard to hate speech and the left's definition of everything supposedly I do and others is always hate speech. Why? You hate. You're a hate man monger. You're a bigot. You're all this and everything else. No. No. I have free speech that gives us the right to opinion and expression. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Right now, I also want to remind you, too, about our dear friends at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And they are located right behind the Minidoka Hospital, across from the emergency room. And the number to call, 312-0957. You know, I, I really urge you to call them and make an appointment, because it could be any one of a number of things that are causing your hearing loss. It could be because of something related to a disease heart disease or diabetes or maybe high blood pressure uh, maybe you're overweight or whatever the problems are you'd better address it and find out they can and they will help you at mount harrison audiology and hearing aids over in the rupert area please give them a call at 312-0957 and right now here's scotty with the weather more of the wet stuff, but maybe clearing up by the weekend. Good morning with your Seventh Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in Virginia Jameson. For today, looking for about a 40% chance of rain, expecting a high around 46. More of the same for tonight with a low of 29. Then for tomorrow, possibility of some snow, highs around 37. Things will be clearing off Friday night. Going to be a little bit breezy, lows around 22. Then on Saturday, mostly sunny, expecting a high of 36. Sunday, mostly sunny. Sunny, a high of 37. That's your Zip at the Ranch weather forecast. I'm Scotty Cameron. Uh, thank you, Scotty. We appreciate it. And brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Again, I urge you to call, make a hearing screening appointment, and uh, call them at 312-0957. Thank you. Calls uh, are welcome and appreciated. 436 436-22-441-866-927-4587. You know, think about this. When somebody starts accusing someone of hate speech, how do you define hate speech? How do you define hate speech? When you sit there and you have an opinion about, oh, let's say, Christianity and your belief in the Bible in its entirety, not picking and choosing, you believe in God's word and you're expressing your opinion about that and that's your freedom of expression in this country you're not going to take the lock-stepping attitude of following like lemmings a group that says oh 
oh, you can't say that about the LGBT. You can't say that about that. You can't say that about that. Yes, you can, because you have a right to your expression. I have thought a lot about this on this program. I will continue to criticize and investigate Islam here in the United States with the people that I invite on this program and many of the discussion points that they bring. I will continue to ask why religious leaders are afraid to speak out and lead and lead in the community to help solve some of our community and human ills. I will continue to demonize illegal immigration, and I will absolutely continue to condemn what I think is a destruction of our moral value in this country. I will go after and continue to go after politicians that should not be in office because they are not serving us and doing their job. Now, those categories today are deemed by many of the elitists as hate speech. What do you feel? Give me a call quickly at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I made the comment the other day, and I mean this, that I think we all, all of us, can make America great again. I believe that we've had kind of a roller coaster ride in 200 plus years. We have been exceptional, and then we have not been. We have been a great country, and then maybe not so much. And I believe that we always, in every situation, whether you are a butcher, a candlestick maker, a teacher, whatever the case might be, we can all be better and do better and create a better environment for what we do and how we treat people in this world. So I do agree that we can all make America great again. What are your thoughts? Give me a call. While I'm waiting for your call, I'm going to tell you, too, about our major sponsor, which is, of course, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. Oh, with a great big tire sale, spring tire sale. You can save up to $200 off of a set of four tires, depending on the tire size and the type, while the supplies last. And they've got the tires like the Eclipse tire for your car, the Ultra Z900, the Open Country HT for your pickups and SUVs. Wow! Big spring tire sale. And then don't forget, too, that they have the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, all of this and more for your safe driving. Please get a hold of them today. And that, of course, includes Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All right, give me a call. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Like to hear what you have to say. We got two minutes left. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Zeb, I, I'm, I'm back, but you made a comment earlier about uh, getting a congressman, federal congressman, out of D.C., and uh, I thought about that, and I thought, you know what would be even better with today's technology is put them back in their own home states and uh, let them do video conferencing. The, the technology exists that that can be easily done to get them back in their own home states and get them out of that swamp back there. Mm. That's an idea worth pursuing. I tell you what, you put your thinking cap on over that one. Uh, I'm not opposed to your idea at all. I'd like to sit and think about how it could be applied and how readily it would be accepted by others to get a job done. But I kind of like to think about that one for a while. You you know, I do document signatures all the time um, over uh, Internet, you know, where it's, 
it would be an easy easy system to put into place. Mm. But you know, it would be good to get people back in their own home state or not a DC. It would be good to get them to the point where they respect the job they're supposed to do and that they would respect the people that they work for. And then add that term of limits. Absolutely. No way am I going to disagree with you. I appreciate that. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thanks. Call again. Thanks. Thanks. All right, sir. We're going to run to the news. In my case, that's an oxymoron. I will limp fastly. (laughs) We'll be back in about, oh, seven minutes or so. More Zeb at the ranch. Don't go away. Wheels, it's all yours. Good morning and welcome back. Here we are. I almost missed my cue. I was visiting. (laughs) I can't do that. Morning, everybody, and welcome back to hour number two of our program this morning on Thursday, March 7th. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with a great big spring tire sale. And, of course, don't forget some of our top-notch advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. We're going to have our next guest with us in just a moment, but I also want to acknowledge and say a great big thank you to Dino Septic Service. Oh, they do the job that you and I don't want to do. That's right. And they do it with a great big smile on their face, and they've recently expanded to better serve more people here in Magic Valley. Septic tank pumping and liquid waste removal, sewer and sink drain lines clean, uh, water and sewer lines installed, backhoe services, all of this and so much more. All you have to do is give them a call at 436-6526. Or over in the Burley area, six seven eight one six three eight. Dino's Septic Service, serving you with that great big truck that says, smells cargo on the way, and they will serve you. I ate a cookie. I, I know I'm not supposed to have cookies, but I had a cookie during the news. <laughs> and the cookie won't leave me alone. <laughs> you know, sometimes a cookie just sits there and you want to say, I wish I wouldn't have ate that cookie. Well, that's how I feel. I uh, want to remind you also that uh, Hanson Mortuary, located at 710 6th Street in Rupert, uh, w- w- they're waiting to serve you and your family, absolutely, with a lot of the pre-information that we all need for our families and for us on planning of funerals. All you have to do is call, and they will help. 436-5636. That's the number, 436-5636. Joel Hewitt, his family and his staff serving you always, and I really mean this, with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please call 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary, and Joel Heward also serving you at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to have our chamber report, and things are changed a little bit this morning. We're going to have a member of the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce on the air with us, and he is also one of the top-notch people at Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company Accounting Services, and that's Lydon Crane, my dear friend. Lydon, good morning, sir. How are you? Really well, Zeb. Thanks for having us on this morning. Well, I'm going to ask Will Wheels to click, click. There we go, Wheels. Turn him up a little bit. And uh, Leiden, you're kind of pinch hitting this morning for the chamber. What have you got for us? <laughs> yes, I am. And uh, I don't know if I'll do as good of a job as Sarah, but I will sure give it a shot. Um, I, I'm happy to come on this morning. I, I first, as a member of the board, just want to say thank you to all of the great members at the chamber for everything they do. I know many of them are out there working really hard right now to make our community a better place. And, um, um, you know, we, we appreciate them and everything that they, they do for our community. Um, so I, I was uh, asked to kind of go over our calendar that's coming up here. We've got a lot of exciting events here in the next couple of weeks. Um, at the end of this week, on Saturday, March 9th, um, we, the University of Idaho is sponsoring a Master Gardener Symposium. Mm-hmm. I know the 
the weather's turning a little bit warmer on us here, and before you know it, um, you're going to need to be out there getting your garden ready. And um, they've got some great things over there to help teach you some of the newest techniques. And uh, they they will be holding that at, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Maury's Steakhouse. And the the sign up can be found at the chamber website. I believe the cost is about it's uh, twenty five dollars, and uh, you can go on there and or show up at the door and, and pay to get in there as well. Um, uh, the next event we've got coming up, and this is important for Cash and Minidoka counties, is the school bond election that will be taking place next week on Tuesday, March twelfth. Um, early voting is already open, and the chamber wants to encourage uh, everybody in both counties to, to get out and uh, make sure that you're voting on that and let your voice be heard. Okay. And um, we You're doing good. I'm just going to let you be on a roll. Go ahead. No. <laughs> um, next week we have um, our monthly ambassador meeting, which will be held at uh, at Maury's at noon. All right. Um, anybody who would like to be a part of the ambassadors is welcome to come to that. I've been an ambassador for the last three or four years. It's a great opportunity to find out what's going on in the community and let um, people know what's going on with your business. Um, and then um, our big event next week is going to be happening on March 14th, and that's our monthly chamber luncheon. And that will be held this month at Young Automotive in Burley at noon. Um, it's uh, each um, person or each business with a membership, the lunch is free for non-members. It will be uh, $15. And they are going to be doing a uh, drive for children's clothing um, to help local uh, school children in need of clothing. And it's a great initiative that they've come up with, and we hope that uh, everybody can come out and support them with that. And then um, also next week on March 15th, which will be a Friday, we will be doing a, a ribbon cutting for a new business here in Burley. Um, it's uh, called Turnkey Realty. They will be having an open house from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, at 1333 Overland Avenue. Okay. Their ribbon cutting will be held promptly at 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. and. I should be there along with uh, several other members of the chamber to welcome them to the area. Let me ask you a question right there, Leiden. Uh, those big scissors that they always use to cut the ribbons, have they ever failed? <laughs> I, I don't believe so. They're, they're definitely not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're big enough that what they lack in sharpness, they make up in size. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so we're excited about that. Um, looking out into the future, I'm sure we'll be talking more about these events um, in the coming weeks. But um, on April 24th, which is next month, um, the Chamber will be holding its Women's Expo. Now, right. I've never been invited to that. Um, I, and I, you know, I hear it's a really good time, and I feel kind of bad about that. But I, I think it's a, a great event for... Um, the females here in our community, and it's going to be from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. and held at the Best Western Inn and Convention Center um, in Hayburn. And so if you can mark that on your calendars, the Chamber is accepting sponsorship for any businesses who wish to go and um, have a booth or a table. And uh, to get those sponsorships, you can call down to the Chamber and talk to Lorena and she'll help you get all set up. Okay, now my question is this. Uh, give us the date again and the booth space. Uh, do you have any cost for advertisement of the booth space? How much is it going to cost? You know, I don't have that right offhand. I don't remember exactly what we said on that. Um, but that can be obtained from Lorena okay. by calling down to the chamber. And the date on that is April 24th. And it will be held from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's always been a very successful event over connected with the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. And uh, so I know we're going to be doing a little, I think, advertising on that event. So I hope everybody calls and gets that information. Yeah. Yes, we would, we would 
definitely appreciate that, and we want to continue to have that be our, our premier event of the spring. Okay. okay. Anything else cooking over there? Um, uh, later this summer, uh, I know this is also a, a big event for many of us who enjoy the, the game of golf um, and also doing some advertising and marketing. Um, our annual golf scramble date has been set. Okay. Um, okay. We will be uh, golfing this year at River Edge Golf Course in Burley. The event will be held on June 19th, and I believe the golfing will start around 9 a.m. We'll, we'll get all of those details out to people later, but um, we're going to be starting to advertise for that and accept um, team registrations, um, and we're it's a great event. It sells out every year. You're going to want to make sure you get in early and uh, get your team and sponsorships put in because those slots fill up very quickly. All right. All right. Do you golf in that tournament? I have the last few years, yes. And I, I don't know if you want to call it golfing. I, I go out and participate, and I lose a few balls in the river. Um <laughs> And we have a really good time. I, last year, I, I actually took my son with me. He came and rode in the golf cart. And I, he was the, the people that come and do sponsorships give out the free drinks and candy. He was in heaven. He's already talking about wanting to go again this year. All right, now, but i got to ask you, are you an honest golfer or are you what's called a toe nudger? Uh, <laughs> well, luckily with the chamber scramble, we give out a, a three foot of string to help out with those toe nudges so it's legal in in that in this chamber tournament i see okay well listen Lydon. anything else before i have to wrap it up this morning and, and move on to other things what else is cooking anything um you know there what there is a, another event which we are advertising for on our website that um there on march 15th the kiwanas here in uh, burley are sponsoring a pickleball tournament, and okay. I I enjoy pickleball. I I don't know if I'm going to get a play in it with tax season going on right now, but um, on the chamber website on our calendar, if if you're interested in playing pickleball, I know they've got a, a great venue over um, at the Oregon Trail Recreation District to set up several pickleball nets, and it's it's a an activity that's a lot of fun. Anybody can play it, all age levels. Um, you don't have to be you know, Michael Jordan or uh, LeBron James to have freakish athletic ability, but um, it's a it's a game that's a lot of fun. And the I can't remember what the registration cost was, but it will be held on the 15th and 16th of this month and is being sponsored by the Kiwanis. All right. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, with our Minicasha Chamber report this morning, the very nice man of Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company, Lydon Crane. Lydon, it was a real treat to have you on the air this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great day, Zeb. All right. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. And that's your Chamber report for this morning. Uh, calls are welcome. I've got a little open time here. I'd like to have some of your calls at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Don't forget lease furniture, floors, and more. Did you hear? Did you hear that they are getting new arrivals of everything into the store? Carpet, vinyl, flooring, planks, you name it, lease furniture has it oh my goodness and right now too listen to this a huge special on mattresses 50 to 75 percent off are you kidding me they've got all the recliners all the power recliners all the sofas and love seats what are you waiting for it's time to go in and comfortize and beautify your home from lee's furniture floors and more at 459 overland and burley you stop in and see those good folks today I want to also remind you, too, that at, uh, let's see, 1023 this morning, our business salute, we're going to be talking to Nick and Randy, the whole crew over at Let's Ride, and we're going to be talking to them coming up in the next hour, so don't forget about that this morning, and uh, it's time to think about all those four-wheelers and hitting the hills. Yeah, I hope spring is right around the corner. I really do. I've had my... 
little tummy full of winter and snow and ice and rain and wind and everything else. I'd like to see it warm up. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Headline in the paper this morning, and you know that they, the left and the environmentalists, are just absolutely sitting in crying rooms right now, tearing their hair out, chewing on their knuckles. How in the world could this happen? The United States to end wolf protections. When I saw that headline, (laughs) excuse me, I thought of my dear friend Jack Oiler and others that have fought for almost 20 years or more in regards to get the wolf protections ended. And the United States wildlife officials plan to lift protections for gray wolves across the lower uh, lower 48 states. And they also know, according to the headline and the story this morning, this will reignite the legal battle over a predator that's running into conflicts with farmers and ranchers as its numbers rebound in many regions. And uh, the proposal would give states the authority to hold wolf hunting and trapping seasons. It should be. Now, I don't think anybody, anyone, is going to go out willy-nilly and just start a campaign of annihilation, knowing that these uh, uh, protections might be reimbursed and restarted again, and we don't want to go through that. But there has to be some protection for farmers and ranchers. There has to be something where they can go out and protect their property without having the big fear of government on their shoulder. And uh, I was reading the story this morning, and it said that recovery of the gray wolf under the Endangered Species Act is one of our nation's great conservation successes with the wolf joining other cherished species, such as the bald eagle, that have been brought back from the brink. That's according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. But, oh, my goodness, the wildlife advocates are going nuts over this, and they want to keep federal protections kept in place until wolves repopulate more of what they say is a historical range that stretched across almost all of North America. What are your thoughts on this? I'd like to hear what you have to say. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call. Let me know what your thoughts are. While I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in, let's not forget to our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance in Rupert. Highway 24 in Rupert. And, of course, they specialize in life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. If it's all of this and so much more for you, your family, and your business, please give them a call. They're very, very devoted and accessible to serving you. The number is 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 and Rupert. You get a hold of them today. All right, get a hold of me today at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Oh, by the way, in a personal note, wheels, turn on the microphone for a minute. You know those very expensive, uh, very elite headsets I bought? Yes, you were telling me about that. They don't work. Are you kidding me? No, they don't work. Uh, First of all, they're like wearing a couple of sauna tubs on your ears. They are absolutely very sweat-inducing. And second of all, uh, it's a distortion of the sound. So I went back to the broken ones. Did you save your box? Yes, and I have my receipt, Dad. I'll make sure I take care of it correctly. (laughs) <laughs> well, good. I'm I'm glad. I, you know, it's one of those things too. You know, over here my headphones get a little sweaty too, so I have to kind of you know jockey them back and forth every now and again. Oh, these these are terrible. You know, I should have thought of that when I bought them. I mean, my goodness, they're like putting a couple of great big steam clams on your ear. You know, it's a good idea. Maybe Walmart and maybe some of the other general stores can do this. They need to come up with the idea of letting you try on the headphones before you buy them, like when they put out the cell phones. Uh-huh. Where you can see them before you buy them. 
And you can do something like that to where you can put the headphones on. And listen, and listen to something. Yes, you're 100% spot on. Exactly. I bought these things unknown as to what their value and their worth would be and how they could generate sound for me. And they came in a great big fancy. You should see the box. Oh, the box is great big and fancy, and you got to have a, a, almost like a combination to break into it. But they're not going to work. Well, see, and that that's the issue right there. Maybe someone can note that down and you know come up with that and see what they can do as far as that idea. All right. Well, you answer the phone. I would appreciate it. All right. All right. Will do. Oh, uh, that's a good idea, Wheels. Thank you. They ought to have a little deal to where you can plug the jack in and say, "Oh, this sounds good," or "No, that's not going to work." Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, important question for you there, Mister Zip. What in the world is pickleball? Do you explain that for us old dumb cowboys? Well, okay, sir. Let me saddle my horse and ride up next to your horse because I don't have a clue as to what pickleball is, what it does, or the rules and regulatory means of winning and losing. So as two cowboys ride off into the sunset like uh, Cisco and Pancho, not knowing what pickleball is, it's you and me, pard. Well, I didn't know if it maybe that... Uh it's a ball game that you a trophy with a pickle or something like well, that. Well, no, I think, I think, and I'm going to stand corrected on this, I don't have time to, you know, understand all these different games, but I think, isn't pickleball where the ball's got a bunch, it's a plastic ball and it's got a bunch of holes in it and it doesn't travel very far and I, I don't know, I don't know what pickleball is because I'm not really attuned to playing any games such as that. Well, I don't feel too bad then. Well, when it comes to old cowboys, uh, let's just stick with the horses and rodeo, a good football game on Sunday, and maybe a not-too-bad basketball game, but I don't know that much about pickleball. Change the subject a little while I've got you here. Uh, there's, I think there's one, seven uh, words that answer a lot of things. Nineteen fifty-five. I was in the Air Force. Yes, sir. And with that, that commander's call, and I'll never will forget this. And you think about this when I tell you these seven words. The problem with this whole world is right now, and what is going on. Those seven words are: we will take you without firing a shot. You've got it. And that was said by Nikita Khrushchev of Russia back in nineteen sixty-three. Yes, that's correct. You know, I always appreciate your call. It's been a long time since I've heard from you. God bless you, sir, and thank you for your uh, question. Maybe the next caller that's waiting knows all about pickleball, so stay tuned, okay? okay. All right. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Are you a pickleball expert? I'm not a pickleball expert. The only thing I want to say about those helicopters that are missing, one day... They may be fired back at us. You know, Bob, all kidding aside, honestly, uh, you've been around this old world for a little while, and maybe you've lost your car keys, or maybe you've lost a jacket, or maybe you misplaced a hat or whatever. How? How in the world can you lose 39 helicopters? With great difficulty. <laughs> Bob, thanks for your call, buddy. <laughs> you don't test me anymore, do you? Oh, my gosh. I'm scared of you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Bob. Oh, 39 helicopters are missing, and the government doesn't know where they are. You've got to be kidding me. Uh, when the controller looked and said, oops, can't find them, along with 471 billion buildings, I should say, it's just how do you lose a helicopter, let alone 39 of same-set helicopters, all Blackhawks, and where are they? Well, uh, the last time we saw them, they were, well, I'm not sure they're not there now. How do you lose 39 of our, we're the taxpayers, we're the ones that paid for them, our helicopters? Unbelievable. 
Uh, let's see what else have we got. Next hour, don't forget we're going to have Dr. James Shank from uh, Cache County Schools. He's going to be talking about the upcoming bond election. And then also at 1030 this morning, a very important conversation we're going to have with Dr. Bill Fulcher from Ark Animal Hospital on a disease that animals are transmitting to humans. Very, very serious. Right now, let's go to the phone line and a lovely lady that's here every Thursday that I look forward to, Rita Ramsey. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today in this rainy season? Well, I was going to ask you, uh, it's Glenn's turn to bring more nails so we can finish one part of the ark. Boy, isn't that the truth? Of course, I was just mentioning the wheels. We do live on the desert, and we do need the moisture, so I guess we're just going to have to grin and bear the London treatment we're getting. Okay. Guys. <laughs> okay. Rita, I, I, I don't even know where to start this morning because uh, there's so much going on in the news, and it gets worse every day. I guess that's what the Bible told us. But when you, I want to start with this, I guess. When when you think about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and you think about the two Muslim women that have been elected to our Congress and you think about Kirsten Gillibrand and Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren and the power table that's been created for these women and giving credence to these Muslim women to say and do anything they want, but they get no condemnation for their stupid remarks in return. I've said it on the air, and I'm going to stand by it. Politics and the general public are kowtowing to Islam, and it's going to be our downfall. Well, it really is, and and we don't even need to say Islam. We need to say, you know what, there are rules, and you go by the rules. Why do the rules only apply to the Republicans when somebody like, oh, what's his name, King from Iowa said? Stephen King. Since when was white white supremacy a racist word? Yeah. I mean, you know, and he gets taken off committees and everything, and then, boy, they shut him up and say, hey, bud, You know, you're out of here, so just bide your time. Well, look at all the things that these ladies have said and done, and nobody is holding them to accountability. And it's really sad. And, you know, someone brought up earlier on your program that we wonder why these representatives aren't just screaming their heads off or doing something or fighting for us. They're just sitting on their hands and keeping their mouth shut, hoping that nobody says, do you remember what Senator Crapo said when these ladies were so out of control? I mean, they're so afraid to say anything that they're not doing it. And, you know, it might be a good idea for them to just let them burn themselves down and nobody say anything. But it, it wasn't that way when, when somebody, you know, crosses their eyes and they're a Republican. Well, I want to just make one small correction. When Stephen King of Iowa was talking, primarily he was talking about white nationalism. And I would like you right now, I'm going to put you on the hot seat a little bit, Rita. I do not see, and I've studied this issue and talked to a lot of people, what is wrong with being a proud white nationalist here in the United States? When I'm a Caucasian. You're a Caucasian. But for anyone, if they can have brown skin, black skin, whatever the case might be, if they're a proud Negro to be here in America and they're proud of this country, there's nothing wrong with that and they're a nationalist, if they're a proud of Spanish heritage or Mexican heritage, a Mexican descent, and they're proud of this country, what's wrong with that, being a proud nationalist? Why is it that I'm looked down upon and you're looked down upon if we say, well, I'm a a Caucasian, I'm a white nationalist, I love this country more than any other country in the world. What's wrong with that? The part that's wrong with it is that they don't know what a white nationalist is is they re- they recognize it as a white supremacist or those who are racist or anything else they don't even just say well okay these white nationalists are just white people who are members of the nation i mean they they don't they don't know and so they link them all together and say well you know those are those are like those people that the skinheads and and the people who really do hate hate uh, the jewish and hate the blacks and hate everybody and and so they just start bunching, bunching the white nationalists together. And, of course, that's what they wanted to do because the nationalist word came up with Trump. 
is if we can, if we can, um, you know, bag them all together into one, then nobody will know the difference, and they'll just hear white and go, oh, you can't say white. Well, that, okay, you've made my point, and you've helped solidify my point. Why even put any color of skin in front of it? I mean, just say, I'm a nationalist. I'm very proud of the United States. I'm very proud of what my forefathers did to create a nation for me and my family, to have the opportunity to thrive and prosper if we go out and use our our uh, personalities and our wits about us to try to be good uh, uh, people of the United States as taxpayers. What's wrong with being a nationalist? Explain that to me. Well, there is nothing wrong with that. It's just that they've taken and, and uh, put it into a different category instead of the category it should be in. And and so I guess we need to start saying, you know what? Okay, if you want to put the nationalists in with it's a different thing, I'm just a patriot. I'm a constitutional conservative. I believe in the constitutional. I'm grateful for the constitution. I'm grateful for the opportunities that our founders gave us to to make a living and, and live free of tyranny. The big problem is is we're there. We're back where they were back in the 1700s. We're under tyranny from our government. We are being taxed to the hilt. And they'd like to just toss the Constitution out. Our representatives aren't representative, representing us anymore. Well, let me ask you this. And I'm really a stickler on this because it offends me. Uh, I've had some emails that people say, Oh, you're nothing more than a nationalist, and you're not thinking past the scope of our shores and worrying about other nations. Wait a minute. When I say these words, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I'm not saluting Brazil. I'm not saluting Japan. I'm not saluting any other country because I'm proud of one nation under God, the United States. I'm not going to weaken on my stance. Uh, nor should you. The big, the big issue is, is that they need to see and be reminded of the whole picture. Is there a country on the earth that has done more for the other countries on the earth than the United States of America? That's right. It's because of freedom and liberty and our opportunity to make money and do what we want to do so that we can help those in other countries. You know, I have in front of me something I want to share with you and my listeners. And uh, my lovely bride got this this morning, thanks to the National Conference of Jewish Affairs. It was written by Rabbi Arya Sparrow. He's been on my program. Listen to this first paragraph, and it tells everything that's going on with those Muslim congresswomen in Washington. Quote, Representatives Omar and Representative Tlaib are employing the time-tested, drip-by-drip method used successfully by Islamists in Europe against Jews and Israel. Week after week, poisonous remarks against Israel or Jews are made by Islamists with the goal of being a continuous seepage of anti-Jewish caricatures into the political discourse and into the minds of a country's population. The apologies are insincere and expedient and breather until the next time. It's death by a thousand cuts to Israel and her supporters. Isn't that the truth, Rita? That's exactly what's going on. Well, absolutely. And the part that's just sad about it is the Democrats are just going to go ahead and say, it's okay, it's okay, we're not going to worry about it, because they're not big fans of Israel anyway. Even though some of those folks are even Jewish, they're not fans of Israel. And it's just, it's just mind-boggling how they can say, well, it's okay for Democrats to be, you know, anti-Semitic and everything else, but if uh, if a Republican says the slightest little thing that that or crosses these eyes that might be color like brown, in fact, um, in that uh, deal yesterday, yesterday and the day before with the uh, Department of Homeland Security, you know, that one congressman kept saying. Well, don't you think that they're they're mistreating brown babies? And it's kind oh, of like, brother. so what are you saying? All of those people coming across there are brown? 
and we're not doing it because they're brown. Is where what we're doing is we're trying to get them back to their families, and, and you know they wouldn't recognize the part of the the real sins that are happening there from the cartel and and the treatment of women and and these uh, uh, people that they're you know transporting back and forth and and treating them like slaves mm-hmm. they won't even address that he's saying you weren't treating brown babies like you would if they were white well and i want to ask you about that a little bit i listened and watched uh with great intent yesterday to the hearing with the uh, department of homeland security secretary nielsen and i said earlier this morning and i'm going to stand behind these words the democrats acted in a despicable manner they acted ignorant they chastised her they belittled her and they absolutely ignored the facts, and they insulted her. And the whole thing boils down to every single question that was asked or every remark that was made, she had a factual, underline that word, factual answer to give them, backed up by all the uh, different statistics that they have found over the last two years. And I'm sick and tired of the Democrats and this party turning into a party of hate and socialism and they're not being challenged. Well, they're not, and the part that's really sad about it is they made this look like that that she and the Trump administration and anybody who's in favor of, of uh, keeping, keeping control of immigration, they made it sound like that, that they're, you're just racist instead of dealing with it. You know, they, it was mentioned, and, and I've heard this on... Uh, Uh, other places from some specialists that are down on the border and have been for a number of years keeping track of all of this is um, I don't know whether you remember her uh, her saying well they're recycling children and then she started talking about it and it was kind of like well no we want to cut you off well what they're doing is they're recycling kids because they know if they come across the border anybody who has a child with them won't be detained that's right they'll go ahead and let them come in no questions asked and then they get rid of the children send the children back across the border and those same kids come with other people who aren't families they're not in charge of that minor or anything else so they're recycling them they're they're little slaves is what they are she also mentioned and and this is what's really sad and nobody addressed it really is is um, because of our laws, this this can happen, and we need to change the laws. She also said that any of the girls that are 10 years or older yeah. are given pregnancy tests because they know they have been raped through their whole journey, and that's part of their payment to the cartels, and they have to come and probably will be prostitutes on this side of the border to pay back the cartels for transporting them, you know, this human trafficking thing. And nobody's paying attention to this kind of stuff. This is serious, and it is an emergency. And the Democrats are just acting like, you guys are just a bunch of racists. You don't like people who are brown. Rita, I don't even know uh, what your thoughts are regarding our own uh, politicians that represent the state of Idaho back there in Washington. I'm going to be picking at one in particular right now. But when you talk about uh, the two Muslim women that have created a lot of turmoil back in the House, Omar and Tlaib, and then you're also looking at a woman that's absolutely using stupid ideas to break this country, and that, of course, is Alexandria Cortez. Have you heard, and please inform me if you have, have you heard anything from our illustrious Congressman Mike Simpson? No, and you won't, and the reason why you won't is because he would say, if you were to ask, I can't say anything because then that would make them be be looking at every little word I said and be ready to pounce on me and not let me have freedom of speech. That's what they call it. It's freedom of speech for her, but you can't say it if you're from the other party. I I just don't understand what's going on. I don't understand what's going on with these people. I don't care what the elected official's name is. They work for us. And when we make demands as their employer to find out what's going on and tell us and inform us, all of a sudden all you hear is crickets, and I'm fed up with it. Well, either crickets or they say... You know, you elected me, and so I can say and do whatever I want to say. And then in parentheses, uh, in a whisper, they say, 
I don't have to be accountable to anybody. Well, that's the point. You know, Mike and I had our to-dos about three years ago over a Muslim issue regarding the Muslim Brotherhood in the Obama administration. And I'm not going to back up. Uh, uh, History has proven my remarks to be right, his remarks to be wrong. And I think that at that juncture, I've lost a lot of respect for Mike because he's never once called back to this program and asked if he could get some airtime on any and all subjects that he should be reporting to you and every other person in the state of Idaho as their congressman. I'm not hearing anything from him, and I'm not going to be a dog chasing parked cars. Well, that's just it. He was confronted with a difficult question, and he didn't have the right answer, and he knew he didn't, and so why would he ever want to come back on a show where somebody would be asking him questions that are pertinent to his his appointment and and him being a representative? Well, I just don't want to have to answer to you. And and therefore, what I said is they don't think they have to account to anybody. We elected them, and they can say whatever they want. Absolutely. Rita, bear with me just a moment. I've got to get a weather forecast on here quickly. And the weather this hour brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. We just talked to Leiden a little bit ago. And, of course, this great firm provides accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. The very best of tax planning, business consulting, payroll services, retirement planning, tax return preparation, all of this and so much more with offices in Burley and Rupert. They are the best at what they do. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, Scotty has the weather. More of the wet stuff, but maybe clearing up by the weekend. Good morning with your 7th Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina Jameson. For today, looking for about a 40% chance of rain, expecting a high around 46. More of the same for tonight with a low of 29. Then for tomorrow, possibility of some snow, highs around 37. Things will be clearing off Friday night. Going to be a little bit breezy, lows around 22. Then on Saturday, mostly sunny, expecting a high of 36. Sunday, mostly sunny. A high of 37. That's your Zeb at the Ranch weather forecast. I'm Scotty Cameron. Uh, thank you, Scotty. I'm brought to you by some really good people that you need to get to know because they can help you, your family, and your business. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin Crane, and Company with offices in Burley and Rupert. Please get a hold of them today. The best serving you. Rita, the bottom line you and I, your family, your business, everybody we know, we put politicians in office through an election process to represent us and hopefully take care of certain issues and items and then also be a sounding board for problems that come up that they can help us politically. Are we being served? Just answer that question. No, we're not. (laughs) And, and th- th- that's, the, that's the part that's really sad, is that as long as we continue to reelect them, and apparently there's enough people who think they're doing okay, we continue to get the same thing. The big issue is, is are people contacting them? I would like um, <laughs> to open up your show to tell people, okay, if you've contacted one or more of your um, uh elected officials in the last year call in and tell us and see how many people have done it a lot of times it's like oh i'm going to do that or i'm or you know well i forgot and maybe and you start you know figuring oh well, i haven't done it as often as i should that's the deal is we all need to be doing it all the time and keeping them on their toes oh. letting them know that we're a thorn in their side and we expect some some answers and a little accountability. Well, and one step further than that, one step further, and I know you're going to agree with this. When they do, they, meaning the politicians, do show up in a respective area. I don't care if it's a Lincoln Day banquet. I don't care what it is. If they're out stumping to get reelected, how many people really make the plan to go to that meeting and stand up in a respectful manner and say, oh, Mr. Congressman, oh, Mr. Senator, what are you doing or not doing in regards to this issue? You. We need to put them on the hot seat in public and let them know that we're aware of they're not getting the job done. Well, we do, and that's what comes when you're in, in the know about what's going on is you have an issue you can confront them about. A lot of people, it's just kind of like, well, I guess everything's going okay, and then they just 
Don't go any further. What did you think, and I know you heard this because, and I mean this out of complete respect, you're a news junkie like I am. What did you think when you heard yesterday that the Democrats are going to stop, and they have stopped, Fox News from carrying some of their political debates? Well, it just shows that they're actually afraid to let the conservatives see what's going on. Absolutely. They're, they're afraid of it. They don't want the truth to come out. They don't want all of this stuff going on. And I think this comes right from Pelosi and and uh, Schumer and saying, you know what, if, if America, the conservative America, especially because they can use this against us, see this kind of thing happening, which thing I'm talking about is all the stupidness. And, and and what's going on with the Democrats. And maybe we ought to just sit back and let them uh, watch them eat themselves, because that's what they're doing is just eating each other. And, and it's, it's kind of hilarious, because Pelosi does not want those other people to be in charge, and they are getting to be in charge, but she's kind of like, now what am I going to do? And it's, it's really kind of sad because they should be able to have it on Fox as well as any of the others so that America can see what the issues are and what what they're saying they're going to do to take care of the issues. You know, yesterday I had uh, my good friend, the uh, economist from New Jersey, I had uh, Dr. Michael Bussler on the program, and he's been on many, many times, and he was equating and relating what really a trillion dollars is and what it looks like, and then you start uh, multiplying that, we're $22 trillion in debt, and the Democrats, like Ocasio-Cortez and Kamala Harris and others, want to put us at least $94 trillion in debt with a green energy deal. And they call it an investment while the country goes broke. Why in the world can't the public laugh these people out of office? Well, that's the part that just makes you kind of wonder what in the heck's going on, because if if they're really serious and and i think in their own minds they are somewhat but i think a lot of it is showed just seeing how you know if they can get people on board this green stuff because the green stuff is really the is really what's the crux of all this and that green stuff comes from soros and his funding and pushing it because he knows that it will totally break down the economies of these countries and and that's what he wants but the big issue is, is those facts that you just gave, while they are the ones that we talk about, there's a couple of hundred trillion dollars worth of unfunded liabilities that nobody's talking about. And everybody ought to be really concerned about that as well. You, when you just start adding more and more and more and more and more on top of it and take away the things that would help take that debt down, you're in big trouble. And about the only thing that's going to take that debt down is if we start selling our natural resources, oil and natural gas and so forth, to other countries, and the federal government takes a royalty off of those, and that goes against the debt, and that's how you'd get that debt down. Well, if they want to get the green stuff going and we can't drill and we can't do anything with natural gas or oil or any of that other type of stuff, we're just stuck in the mud and sunk. Let me ask you quickly, and I've only got 30 seconds left, but they equated the figures, uh, Casio cortez and uh, Camilla Harris and everything. When the figures were broken down by economists, including the gentleman that I talked to yesterday, it equivalates if we take on that kind of debt for a stupid, absolutely asinine, ridiculous Green Deal energy program, it would cost on a per-household basis with the taxpayers, per household, $600,000. I don't have that in my pocket. Well, that's just it. And she's there to tell you everything's free. You're not going to have to worry about that. <laughs> she's just she's just crazy, and so are all these other people that think that green is the way to go. We need to be stewards, but green is not the way to go. Rita, it, t it went too fast. I just thoroughly enjoy visiting with you. God bless you and your business and everything, and we'll talk to you next Thursday. Okay, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Rita Ramsey, and we always look forward to having her on the program Thursday mornings. You know, I make no bones about it. I'm on this diet. I've lost about, no, oh, 14, 15 pounds, give or take, maybe a little 
fudging here and there. Uh, but I'm starving to death, and I know some great places for you to go eat, like the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main in Burley. Mint Oreo Shakes for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, does that sound good? Along with a maybe famous Farmer Brown burger with an order of fries and the sauce or a fish sandwich. Oh, my goodness, stop in. Great food, nice people at AC Drive-In 601 East Main in Burley. Well, how how about Taco Bandito at 2301 Overland in Berlin? It's one of the greatest places to get together in the morning for your coffee and have a breakfast burrito, scrambled eggs, bacon and sausage, cheese, onions, tomato sauce on a tortilla shell. Knock your Tony Llamas off. Delicious. All the food is great at Taco Bandito 2301 Overland in Burley. And moving over to Burgers, etc. Two, two locations, 124 South Oneida in Rupert and 700 Overland. Overland in Burley, all the Huckleberry Shakes and the Hamburger Combo. Listen to this. After 3 p.m. in the afternoon, Hamburger Combo only $3.99. Whoa, don't miss this. Great people serving you every day at Burgers Etc. in Rupert and Burley. And let's move over to Stevo's, 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Delicious buffalo burgers and the cheesy broccoli spud. That is so delicious. Delicious. And don't forget, they got different kinds of cupcakes every week. Great places to go for supper with your friends. Hey, that's the place to go. Stevo's, 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. And those are just a few great places to go when you're hungry and starving to death. Wow, that didn't help my hunger any. It made it a lot worse, I'll tell you that. I'm starving right now. And we're going to run to the news from CBS and then come back with Cache County School Days. Uh, Superintendent of Cache County School is going to be on the air. Business salute with Let's Ride. And then at 1030, Dr. Bill Fulchers. All of this and more here on Zeb at the Ranch. Stay tuned. Ah, good morning. I love to listen to that piano in there. Mm-mm. Good morning, Zeb at the Ranch, and I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and they've got a great big spring tire sale going on <clears throat> right now. Pardon me. I've had that frog in my throat for over a week. Pardon me for that. And, of course, also some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Ben. Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to have Cache County School Days, but I want to remind you that Bennett Boys Auction Service, they're going to have a great big John Hurley auction. It's going to be 11 o'clock this Saturday over in Castle Ford. Now, here's what you do. You go to Castle Ford, and the address is 3341 North, 900 East, from the corner Merck in Castle Ford. Go south two and three quarters miles. You can't miss it. Look for the signs. And, of course, it's going to be lunch by the cook shack out there at the sale. They're going to have tractors, and they're going to have all kinds of different farm equipment, balers, etc. They're going to have tillage equipment, uh, bean and grain equipment, all of this, and much, much more. And this sale is managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Don't forget, call Joe for more information at 539-0111. The Bennett Boys Auction Service, absolutely no sale too big, no sale too small. The Bennett Boys, they sell them all. Mm Mm-hmm. Right now, and Wheels, if you could please give me a little bit more sound down the line, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Thank you, my friend. And I'll also remind everybody about Patterson's at 421 East Main in Burley. Curtis and Lorena, the entire staff, wow, are these nice people. And wow, can they help you find just the right TV? How about by Samsung, Sony, Toshiba? Oh, my goodness. And the complete sound systems, the car stereos and the speakers and all your electronic needs, home theater systems. They've even got video surveillance cameras right there. Don't forget, they deliver and install in the Burley area, and they're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. You stop in today. Patterson's at 421 East Main in Burley, serving you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been blessed on this program ever since we started 
the segment called Cache County School Days to have a child's world as our major sponsor. And, of course, they're located at 1308 Overland in Burley. And they have all the games and the puzzles and the toys and the clothing and the baby furniture Everything right there at a child's world, including all the Cherokee scrubs, etc. Very comfy. A lot of people love to wear those. I urge you to stop in. It's a family store and see exactly what they have for you. A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley and they bring you Cashew County School Days and with us this morning on Cashew County School Days, the Superintendent of Schools for Cashew County Dr. James Shank. Dr. Shank good morning sir. Good morning Zeb. Uh, Very nice to have you on the program and needless to say next week is a very important week with Tuesday being a very important day, March 12th. Tell us why and what you hope happens. Well, we're running a a bond uh, and March 12th is the date for the election and uh, we've got uh, a great number of projects that need to be accomplished in the school district and we certainly hope that people will come out and vote. Uh, You can early vote right now. And again, we want to encourage people to do that. Dr. Shank, there are many, many people that perhaps still have a lot of questions that uh, why, why again, why now? How would you respond to those simple questions? Well, um, I guess why now uh, is one of the uh, most, you know, a very, very important question, and and that ties into why again. But our area is growing. Um, We have families moving into our community uh, all the time now. We've got new subdivisions going up. We've got new industries that are being formed, new businesses that are opening. And typically when those things happen, uh, new families uh, come in and there are children uh, that need opportunities to be able to come to school. So uh, we're experiencing growth. And, um, you know, in each of our uh, schools, there are also other needs. Um, when it comes to buildings aging, uh, they need to be addressed. And uh, typically how we do that is through a bonding process, and so we're asking our voters to do that. And, uh, anyway, that's kind of my brief answer. Dr. Shank, let me ask you, you mentioned it, population expansion and also the area's growth as far as this being a place where a lot of people in the last 10 years have said, we want to move there, we want to build a home there, we want to have uh, jobs for the future there and educate our kids there. How do you, as a educator and now superintendent, how do you go about planning for that kind of uh, increase in growth? Well, what we look at is our trajectory. We look for trends, um, how many kids are on our system today. Uh, We take a look at the number of subdivisions that are approved, uh, how many of those homes, how quickly those homes are being built, um, and we just we watch. We watch our outgoing senior class, if you will, how many graduate, how many are coming into our kindergarten. Um, If we have a, a school, for instance, like Burley High School, how many kids are in the junior high? Uh, that's going to push that enrollment uh, to the point where there's no more room. And uh, that's where we're at today. Uh, We study all those things and uh, look forward, uh, look at the stress and pressures that are upon us now, and uh, we have to respond and react. And we're at one of those critical crossroads in time um, where we know that we're going to have we're just going to have a need and issue uh, that we have to take care of. You know, and I guess my uh, question would be at this juncture, what do you do if you, and meaning Cache County Schools, do nothing? What happens then? Well, I, yeah. well, uh, for instance, we have uh, nearly 1,000 kids at Burley High School. Next year we're going to have 11. The following year we're going to have 1,200. Um, and as far as what we do, if we do nothing... Um, we're, we're not going to we're not going to be able to manage the number of kids in that school uh, in a way that it looks right now. Uh, so, uh, you know, it just becomes a factor of well, we understood when that school was built back in the day, it was built for 800, and we've got 1,200 that we know that will be in there, um, and we're going to have to do something. And you know, I've I've been. Uh, known to say the last couple of months, we just can't afford to do nothing. That's where, that's where we're at. We can't kick this down the road. 
uh, there has to be some action taken. You know, people are probably saying, well, what is this going to do by having this uh, bond go through? What's it going to do to my property taxes? And I'm sure that's probably the number one question that you're receiving. Maybe you could elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah. Well, um, you know, factually, your taxes will increase. And that's not something that we're, we're, we're hiding or shying away from. And we want to be very clear. And so... Um, your, your, the property taxes, there's a factor, um, and if you want to do the math, you can, but it's going to go up 0. 0.0014. Um, but simply, if you want to, you can go onto our website, and we have a calculator that you can enter your assessed tax value. It will calculate out how much your taxes will increase annually, um, and you'll, you'll know that. So, for instance, um, uh, if you have a, a typically assessed tax value, we'll say average, um, at about a hundred thousand dollars, we know that your taxes are going to go up um, in the neighborhood of about twenty bucks a month. So that's kind of what people will see on an average type of position. If you pay lower, that'll be lower. If you pay much more, that'll be more. Um, another thing to consider, and people need to be aware that um, because of the growth and the expansion that's occurring in our area, uh, it's perceived, and uh, that there will be more tax dollars, if you will, that will be assessed in the future which will decrease um, everybody's bill. Dr. Shank, uh, how do you know or how do you distribute the $56.7 million on this bond election? How do you know what's going to be a Band-Aid or what's really going to take care of the job uh, for the future? I mean, that's got to be a tough problem to try to solve. Yeah, it's very tough to know, uh, say, five years from now, what the population growth will be. Um, and... If we had a thousand new families move to our area in the next five years, uh, you know, we would look for every possible way to mitigate that issue. But right now, as far as the bond and those projects that we have listed, those are the things that we know. Those are the things that we're projecting forward that should take care of some growth, a massive type population expansion. That's going to be a harder thing to deal with. But the things that we're aware of um, are represented on the list of projects uh, that are that are there. What? And, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you, and pardon my interruption, I mean, how do you define the categories as to where this money will be spent? Okay, so if you look at the, the pie chart on how we've broken things out, uh, 53% of the bond is for growth. Um, then there's um, uh, another 16% that's set aside for uh, a major issue that, uh, that we hear not only from our staff but also from from parents that, you know, our heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems need to be operating appropriately. Kids need to be comfortable. Um, there are some past maintenance issues that need to be taken care of um, that were, if you will, uh, uh, delayed, um, you know, things that just they've, they've got to be managed now. Um, and then there's some other things, you know, like uh, we're dealing, wanting to have a very strong uh, workforce development type position, so our Kaja Regional Technical Center School um, has some additions there that are needed so that kids can come out of our system with uh, certificates at hand so that they can enter the workforce. And, uh, so that's all kind of encompassed in that, that big picture. Okay, Dr. Shank, now what about the actual voting? Now you said the early voting has already started. I believe it started over a week ago. And uh, what about where do they go? How do they know where to go to vote next Tuesday? Okay, so uh, this is one of these pieces, uh, where do I vote? And we added that to our our website just uh, a, a, a little while ago, and um, they can click on that, they can enter their address, and it'll show them uh, where it is that they can go vote. Um, I vote at the county, county courthouse, that's where I go, um, and, and take care of that. Okay. Now, what about the voting times next Tuesday? What time do the polls open? Uh, polls open looking for that right now on our website. I believe they open it at uh, 7. I'm not seeing it come up quickly, so I apologize. I'll have to scramble to get that. And the other question I think people probably would like to know now, there's always those that wait till the last minute, if you will, and want to ask questions or have a thought. Uh, is there a hotline number where they can reach you or other members of the school board to get information? Yeah, they can always call the school district office. Um, 
and uh, and we're happy to answer their questions. You know, it sounds to me like uh, it's always tough to get a facilities bond election passed, regardless of the amount. But if you need it and the growth factor of the area shows that you need it, how can people say no? Well, I, I, I think that when they, if you think it from a context of the kids need a place to go to school, and it needs to be an engaging learning environment, and it needs to have those types of things that our public expects from us, um, it, it, to me, uh, the, the facts present themselves. Dr. Shank, is this area unique for the growth factor and the expansion factor as compared to other areas of the state of Idaho, or are you seeing growth in every other area or region of our state? Well, um, we see a lot of growth, obviously, in the Ada County area. Uh, you know, Magic Valley is growing, obviously. Uh, you know, East Idaho has had a, a, a lot of growth over there uh, through the past several years. Um, I'm not as familiar with some of the other areas in our state, but I know when you think of the Snake River Plain and how that flows through, there's just uh, there's lots of things that are happening and going on. I want to tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time to come on our program. Are there any other thoughts about this bond election that you'd like to lay out on the table this morning? You have the floor. Go ahead. Well, um, I, I want to encourage everyone to become familiar with what it is that we're we're proposing. I. I hope that uh, they'll take the time to do that, get themselves informed, uh, learn about the facts. Uh, you know, there's lots of rumors and things that float around there. Uh, we, we're, we're happy to address any rumor, uh, any of the, the, the information that uh, people want to ask. Um, we've done dozens of presentations around uh, the school district. We have another this evening in Declo that starts at 7 o'clock. We did one last night in Burley, the night before in Oakley. Um, so we're trying to get the word out, but we continue to hear that people say, well, I wasn't informed or these sorts of things. We want people to be informed um, so that they can make a good decision for themselves. Are there any misconceptions about the spending and or use of the money that you'd like to address here this morning? Yeah, there's lots of questions about, you know, will the projects that are listed receive the dollars that are assigned to them? Will the projects be completed on time? Will they be completed? as um, presented and uh, you know I, I, my, my commitment to that is that yes um, we're not putting this out as a uh, as a guess um, there's been lots of work that's gone into this 18 months uh, has gone into the development of this process uh, it's been vetted it's been carefully uh, attended to uh, and uh, presented to us from a, a volunteer citizens committee um, so there's been lots of grass work, grassroots level work that's gone behind it. Okay, and finally, if you'd wrap it up and tell everybody to vote next Tuesday, I'd appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, and yes, um, please vote, uh, everyone. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. Dr. James Shank with Cache County Schools, thank you talking about the facilities bond election on next Tuesday. Thank you for being on the program this morning. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Nice man, very nice gentleman. He's been here in our studio in the past, and we certainly appreciate his being on the air this morning. Dr. James Shank, and he is the superintendent of schools for Cassia County Schools. I want to also say a big thank you again to Child's World, our major sponsor of Cassia County School Days, as they have been for quite a few years now. And don't forget to stop in. It is a family store serving you. You stop in there and see them today. 1308 Overland and Burley, A Child's World, bringing you Cassia County School Days right here on Zebeth Ranch. Wheels, old buddy, old partner, old friend, do we have our next guest on the phone? We do. Randy's on the phone. Oh, my goodness sakes. Randy from Let's Ride. It looks like Nick ran out the back door and said, Randy, take care of talking to that old fat radio announcer. Well, hello, Randy. How are you? Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I can now. All of a sudden, it was a voice from God. There you are. Uh, we're talking to Randy over at Let's Ride at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. And uh, I tell everybody, that is where the fun is sold. Uh, i got to tell you something. Who in the world, and I've asked Nick this on numerous occasions, who draws up the floor plan in the showroom to figure out how in the dickens you're going to get all those outfits in? In that showroom uh, that, that's a, a uh, that, that's all of us 
that, that's an effort by all of us to try to fit everything in here. And the sad thing is, is that we have a full warehouse full about the same amount. So, oh. so as soon as you sell one, you put another one on, and it just you try to keep everything fresh. <laughs> well, now, let me ask you this. How do you know what the public is going to want? I mean, are fun and four-wheelers different in certain areas, certain styles, certain whatever? Or do you have uh, all types right there on the showroom floor? Uh, we try to put all types on the showroom floor just so people can look at what we have available. And, you know, this time of year, a lot of the farmers and ranchers are picking up their irrigators and whatnot, so we try to have a good selection of those as well. And side-by-sides are really popular now, so, and they take up a lot of room, so we try to put one of each on the floor just so people can see what we have. Randy, are the side-by-sides or even those four-seaters, are they kind of taken over the four-wheeler market that, like I have, the old uh, standard uh, four-wheeler, or are they both readily accepted by the public still? Um, they're, they're really popular with the recreationalists. Now, the people that use them for work more so are still um, using the, the ATVs, and we're seeing a few people go back from side by side to ATVs just so that they can go more places, I guess. They're not limited to just roads and stuff. They can ride trails. So. Okay, now when people when people go in there to Let's Ride, now you guys, every time I've been in there, I've been really impressed with your knowledge and uh, all the different things you can say about them. How do you know everything about all these different pieces of equipment? Man, I'll tell you what, you must study at night and then have to take an oral exam the next morning at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, well, no, it's probably just being in the business for 23-some years, you know, and Nick's really, uh, he, he knows his product as well, so m- most of it's just being around it every day. Um, you just learn, and, and then, yeah, we do a lot of testing and, and training and stuff through the manufacturers, so we try to be fairly knowledgeable on everything, but there's a lot of stuff, too, that's all new to us, so we have to learn it and, and uh, you know, pass it on to the customer. Well, and that reminds me to ask this question. I'm going to ask you to speak up a little bit. Um, Are there any new innovative changes to the four-wheeling industry that we should know about going into the spring of 2019? Um, Not a ton. You know, power steering was the big one. Now almost all the manufacturers have power steering available, so that makes it a lot easier to turn and easier on your shoulders and your back and stuff. So so they... um, the biggest improvement you're starting to see or the biggest changes is in the side-by-side market, you know, where they're making 50 inches so you can still enjoy them on trails and stuff. So, But, yeah, the ATVs have stayed pretty much the same. They've just, every year they sort of, you know, new colors and whatnot. So Okay. What about accessories? I mean, I noticed that your accessory department has grown and expanded over the last couple of years. You've got, tell us about some of the items that you have that people might not be aware of. Oh, you name it. Um, this time of year, of course, like snow plows and, uh, you know, putting a plow on to, to move snow around the place or sidewalks is really, but you, Anything that you can probably think of for a side-by-side or an ATV, they make. So, And a lot of that we carry in stock. So, I mean, we're talking gun racks to snow plows to roofs and windshields and full enclosures and heaters. I mean, we usually have, you know, if we, can, if we don't have it in stock, we can order it usually have it in a few days. So. The one thing I'm so happy about with uh, you folks is that when it comes time for service on my four-wheelers, you have got a super service department, and I want you to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, service department is really important. I mean, if you're selling the units, you got to have someone take care of you, know, you after the sale. So we really um, stride on keeping our customers happy. So uh, this time of year is a good time to bring stuff in before it gets into the, you know, where everybody starts rushing in with their four-wheelers and their side-by-sides. So if you are thinking about getting it ready for the spring right now is a good time. Don't I, wait until April 1st when everybody brings them in. i got to tell you that the best thing I ever bought from you folks was that snow plow a couple of years ago. I thought because of our winters here in southern Idaho, I'd probably never use it. Thank the good Lord above that I listened to you and Nick. Yep, yep, they're really handy. Well, they're 
really, really handy. Well, what are the hours that you're open over there so we can send everybody in? Uh, we are open from 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, and then we are open from 9 to 4 on Saturday. Okay, now I understand through the grapevine that also there's been maybe a little change in ownership over there. Yes, there has. Um, the the uh, Taylors have bought out Let's Ride, and Nick will be here for basically another year sort of through the transition, but everything has stayed pretty much the same, same people, same faces, so... Hopefully it just continues on. Well, I tell you what, folks, I consider these people over at Let's Ride my friends, and they introduced me to the world of four-wheeling, and I've really enjoyed it. Randy, God bless you for coming on the air this morning, and we'll send everybody over to Let's Ride where the fun is sold. Well, thank you, sir. All right. God bless. Thank you much. That's a good name. Thank I you, appreciate it. Uh, I think the world of those folks over there, and uh, you will too. Stop over and see them today at Let's Ride. Okay, what have we got cooking here? Um, we're going to send it over to Wheels in just a moment. And then coming up after the bottom of the hour break, we're going to have Dr. Bill Fulcher on from Ark Animal Hospital. Don't miss it. Zeb at the Ranch, don't you go away. We'll be right back. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb. Oh, my goodness. Looks like we're going to have some more moisture the next couple of days. So just kind of settle in, settle back, and enjoy what you have offered to you. It looks like snow might even happen tomorrow. But right now, we're going to go on the phone line to a very, very nice man that has been on our program before representing Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street in Hayburn, and it's Dr. Bill Fulcher. Good morning, Dr. Bill. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Jeff? Well, not too bad, but I had some alarming news that my lovely bride provided to me uh, after a conversation with you about a disease, if you will, that uh, or a bacterial infection called leptospirosis and I did not know that that was transmitted from animals to humans and that's why I wanted to have you on the program. What is leptospirosis? Well, leptospirosis it depends on the species. That We have leptos that affect most of our domestic animals. Uh, you know, the only one that's fairly resistant to it is the cat. It affect, You know, in, in cattle and horses it usually causes abortion. Pigs, it causes abortion, and and you know it's it's so underdiagnosed, I, you know that I don't really know the prevalence of it right now. It, it, uh, it is a disease, though that it's transmitted via uh, stagnant water, uh, mouse urine, uh, she, or skunk urine, raccoons. Raccoons are biggies on it, and and the reason I think this particular dog was exposed to it that we had as an outbreak a couple of weeks ago was that they were feeding cats outside and and the raccoons were coming up and eating them eating the food oh no that opens up a great conversation dr bill because i know that every morning faithfully deanne goes out and feeds anywhere from 39 to a thousand cats that happen to show up in our barn and uh, should we stop doing that well the cats are, are as long as as long as you think that there's not uh skunks or raccoons getting in there i think you're up you're you're all right because that's where they're going to get now like i said the cats are notoriously resistant to to lepto but what what happens is is the dogs are not the dogs are really highly susceptible to it okay now when you say dogs that uh, gives us the canine world but are other animals susceptible to this disease absolutely one of the big deals is that and we had to observe this very put this animal in isolation in the clinic here for two weeks you got to wash your hands you got you know very highly transmissible to humans and while it's treatable in humans it can cause some permanent uh, kidney damage oh my goodness okay so let's back up to the get-go here uh, what kind of feeding practices should or people should not do uh, for their cats or outside barn animals 
Well, they should they should make it so that no wildlife can get in there. Is basically what because that's where it's coming from. Uh, you know, mice can, mouse urine ha, is a, a source of lepto, but most of the time your dog's not eating uh, mice. Some dogs do, but most of the time it's just cats. Okay. And like I say, they're pretty darn resistant to it. In fact, we don't even have a vaccination for it in cats. We do in dogs, but we don't in cats. So now when someone either picks up a, a, a little bowl that you feed various animals in or whatever, are they automatically being susceptible to getting this? Well, if wild animals are, yeah, it, it can go through a braided skin, lepto can. Oh, my. So... It, and this is like a, but uh, let me t- back up a little bit and tell you that this is not a real common disease. Okay. And, and uh, it, it's one that we should be more on the on the outlook uh, uh, lookout for, but it's not all that common to, to see this. Well, now, when... uh, why we saw it in this dog, I have no really uh, good explanation because this dog is in a relatively small backyard, although they do have raccoons and skunks, and that's what I'm figuring it came from. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. You know, over here we have seen many, numerous raccoons and skunks, and automatically you piqued my interest on this because, uh, my goodness, uh, I don't think that there's a way right now if we're going to feed all these cats that hopefully keep the mice population down, that there's a way that we can put that feed where it's out of contact or out of use by raccoons and skunks. I don't know what we could do. Well, you could keep your dogs away from it, and then you'd probably be cool. <laughs> okay, but well, now I'm very concerned when you're talking about in the proximity. What about horses and cattle? Are they also uh, susceptible to this? Cattle we vaccinate every year, so it's one of the it's one of the routine vaccinations that we give to pregnant cows. It tends to be a late term abortion, like seven to nine months. Okay. If you start seeing that, then you've probably got issues with lepto. Well, now, but you say, what about horses? Uh, are they as susceptible or not? They're somewhere between a dog and, and a uh, and and a cat. They they're they're not as susceptible as a dog or cattle uh, or pigs. Okay, but, but they can get it. But now, what about human beings? Is this something that is life-threatening? Uh, what are some of the symptoms? I mean, how would people know? Well, you know, any time you get... Well, you know, it's, kind of, it's misdiagnosed a lot, I think, in humans, too. The, uh, what happens is, in humans, it can do the same thing, because there's like 10 different serotypes or more of lepto, and it can affect their ki- human kidneys, liver. Uh, it causes acute renal failure. Uh, pancreatitis, you know, uh, it's it's depending on the serotype, it can cause a, a myriad of different diseases. Would you suggest that uh, people take special precautions now that they know a little bit more about this leptospirosis? Should they make sure that they don't uh, go out and handle any of the dog or cat dishes with bare hands? I mean, what kind of precautions should they take? Well, outside stuff. Bleach kills it pretty quick, you know. If, if, if just dumping it into, yeah, you're not going to probably get it. Use gloves, you know. Look, what you were just talking about, you know, with this wet weather. One of the main, one of the a big thing that you can pick it up from is from stagnant water. And uh-huh. How much water do you have standing out there right now that the dogs can lick? Well. Uh, in accordance with my arena the last couple of days, we could have had a boat like the Queen Mary float across that thing. Uh, mine, too. Okay. <laughs> my corrals are all like that. <laughs> but now, is this a short-term disease during the course of the year, or is it something that is annually, all 12 months, something to worry about? You can see it any time, but, but we don't see it as much in the summer, mainly because we're a lot drier than, than most. Traditionally, this disease was more diagnosed in the south, you know, the south and east, where they get a lot more moisture than we do. Mm-hmm. And and so they don't have the stagnant water because some of the reason, some of the places you can pick this up. In fact, it, back in Illinois in 1998, I think there was uh, 375 swimmers that got <laughs> contracted lepto in a. They were just swimming in a lake over there. Oh my goodness. 
Well, now, Dr. Bill, I've got to ask you, you know, I think any and all farming operations or ranch operations are open and accessible for skunks and raccoons, etc. Are there any deterrents that a person can use and or utilize to keep them off the property or to make them think, maybe I shouldn't go there? You know, there's no real deterrent for them. There really isn't. I mean, skunks are everywhere. They're, I live pretty close to town. You know where my clinic is, and yeah. I still get skunks here. So they come up off the river, you know, skunks and uh, and raccoons. And I, there's no real deterrent that I, that I can think of right off. They, a lot of people have some live traps that they trap them and then relocate them. I know that there's some friends of mine out in Deklo to try to do that, but that's kind of fighting an uphill battle, you know. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh, if someone has questions about this leptospirosis, uh, are you open and amenable to taking calls? Absolutely. Anytime. Anytime. And right now we're in the process. Of, uh, we immediately, when we diagnosed this one, we got all the police dogs over here. We do all the work on the police dogs in this area, and we got them all in and got them vaccinated again. So... If, if you have any suspicion of your dog out, out the, the disease is, I mean, the vaccine is very, very effective. So, Well, okay, now, does that also transcend to where there is a vaccination to humans that are out uh, working with farming and ranching practices and they might be exposed? Can they get a shot for this? You know, I'm not, I'm not, not that I'm aware of, but, you know, I, I try to stay away from human medicine. <laughs> okay. Uh, one other question I was going to ask you about, and I've got you on the phone, and I'm going to own you for a couple of minutes. You've okay. probably heard about this mess down at Santa Anita Racetrack with all those horses. I believe right now, to date, since the first of the year, there's been like 21 or 22 horses die. What in the world is going on? You know, I haven't, I'm not, I haven't heard that. Well, have, have you heard any of the symptoms or anything? Well, the people are just saying they're keeling over and dying. They don't know if it has something to do with the dirt on the track or the inhalation of some of the particles or whatever. I just thought maybe if you'd heard anything, because sometimes when it starts in a certain part of the country, uh, it seems to move, and then we're all worried about it. Yeah, if I hear anything, I'll certainly call you, because, uh, you know, those race horses, they're everywhere anyway. Yeah. And one of the th- Santa Ana, and then they're they're in Idaho tomorrow. You know, absolutely. One other thing I wanted you to comment on is we've had it on your ad for quite some time about baby chicks from out of state. Maybe you ought to hit that one more time as to the dangers. Uh, the, there, there are such a uh, outbreaks of Newcastle disease and avian flu, and these guys. I would not do that at all. You know, get your chickens local. Okay. If get your chicks local, if if at all possible, do not order out of state ones. What we is had, what we is had new? Several uh, outbreaks of of the avian flu on Newcastle. That and the, the cure for that is a depopulation of your herd. Oh my goodness! So basically, are you saying that if they get Newcastle disease, almost all the chickens are subject to disposal? Every one of them on your place will be. And is that another disease that's transmittable or exposure to humans? Nope, not at all. Okay. Anything else while you've got the floor? You're the boss this morning. You, anything else you want to highlight? No, just, you know, uh, I, I would really make sure that your dogs are vaccinated. The outdoor dogs, we haven't seen as much in, in, the, in the little house dogs. But are they susceptible? Absolutely. You know, if they come in contact with it, you know, go, go running out. How many of the little dogs that you see, if you're feeding your cats out there and the skunks and stuff are coming up and eating, yeah. do the little dogs go out there and eat the cat food? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, Dr. Bill, you're always welcome on this program. You do a great job, and uh, we'll tell everybody to give you a call over at Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street in Hayburn, 678-1177, where we always say every day they have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Dr. Bill, God bless you, man. Thanks. Well, you take care, my friend. I will. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Uh, I did not know this about leptospirosis and being transmittable to humans, and I just urge everybody to beware, be careful out there.
Uh, let's get the weather on, and I would love you to give me a call. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Come on, let's end the week in a good fashion. Give me a jingle. We'll talk about anything you want to discuss. And right now, the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats at 331 North Road, Jerome. With Don Scarrow and the crew, oh, my goodness, go to the website, scarrowsmeats.com. Check out all the absolutely fantastic the good meats, marinated pork ribs and tri-tips. Caller, don't go away. I'll be right with you in 60 seconds. Stand by, please. All the sausage and the bacon, everything fantastic from Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. We're going to take Scotty with the weather and be back with that caller in just a moment. More of the wet stuff, but maybe clearing up by the weekend. Good morning with your 7th Ranch weather forecast. Scotty Cameron sitting in for Gina Jameson. For today, looking for about a 40% chance of rain, expecting a high around 46. More of the same for tonight with a low of 29. Then for tomorrow, possibility of some snow, highs around 37. Things will be clearing off Friday night. Going to be a little bit breezy, lows around 22. Then on Saturday, mostly sunny, expecting a high of 36. Sunday, mostly sunny. A high of 37. That's your Zeb the Ranch weather forecast. I'm Scotty Cameron. Uh, Scotty, thank you much. Brought to you by Don Scarrow and the crew at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Caller, good morning. You're on the air, and thank you for taking the time to call. That's okay. I just wanted to make a comment about the skunks here in Hanson. I've had them occasionally, but this year I've had the biggest male skunk I have ever in my life seen and I've been around them for you know close to 90 years but another thing um, about the racehorses they said the average uh, is about 50 a year die there but most of these or a great deal of these have been because they've broken legs and then they had to be euthanized because of the track conditions and so that's why they've shut everything down and canceled races you know what is it that they've done differently at Santa Anita? I know they were supposed to have a big race down there this weekend, but is it the compaction of the dirt? Is it the dirt in general that was brought in? Is it uh, possibly something else uh, on the racetrack itself? What is it, in your opinion? Well, just from what I've heard on different uh, comments uh, over the radio, that it's because of the all of rain they've had and the weather conditions that the, the ground has changed so completely on the track that it's just not consistent with what they've been having, and it's causing these broken legs. But there were uh, two other things that were causing them too, um, but most more of them were broken legs and in the conditions of the track. And Santa Anita is one of the premier and one of the most uh, focalized racetracks in America today and has been for a long time, and I certainly hope they get this problem corrected. Well, they said this big Santa Anita race was canceled, but they also said another one, which is the uh, preview to or pre-race to the Kentucky Derby, is also canceled. So apparently they're looking at conditions in some of the other tracks. Oh, my goodness sakes. Well, I certainly hope they get it corrected. And uh, may I say this, and I don't mean to sound dis- disrespectful, but keep your doggone skunks over there. Don't send them my way. <laughs> well, I, I was going to live trap him, and then I guess he got the message because he did leave. But I had them for two or three years under my house because my house is old. It sits right on the dirt, and they dug underneath. And so... We got along, but it never occurred to me about the lepto with me because I'm such an old lady that probably wouldn't make much difference. Well, I'll tell you what, we but all. I'm a little more careful about handling the cat food dishes. For Absolutely, and I'm going to tell my wife the very same thing. Thank you so much for your call. God bless you. Thanks. Take care, All right. Uh, it's something that we need to be aware of. You know, there's so many things that we do every day and we don't think about them. And then all of a sudden we hear a little health scare like this and we go, oh, my goodness. Well, just use some common sense. Change a little bit the way you do. I'm going to talk to Deanne after we get off the program this morning and uh, just make sure we change a few of the things we do and how we do them so you're not susceptible to this leptospirosis. All right, give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Skunks. Really, I have no idea. When God was creating things, a couple of things that come to mind that we could certainly do without are the mosquito, skunks, 
and I'll leave the door open for you to add to the list. But mosquitoes and skunks, they make no sense to me as to why we have them. Uh, calls welcome, 436-224-4186-927-4587. Give me a call. I'd like to hear from you. I put out a call yesterday on the air. And I was asking about this, and, and nobody called me. Nobody called me and let me know from the Minidoka County Senior Center. So if there's anybody listening over there, please give me a call right now. I put your ad on regarding bingo, and I asked, is it going to be weekly, or are you going to do it on a certain night, or was it just a one-shot, uh, kind of a one-bullet Barney for that one day? I don't know, and I've had some calls, and I don't know what to tell people. Let's take this call and see what they say. Good morning. You're on the air. Mosquitoes, skunks, and Democrats. Thank you. Have a good day. You know something, Robert? I couldn't think of Category 3, but you summed it up and gave it to me, and I feel so much more educated. (laughs) Thanks, Bob. (laughs) Mosquitoes, skunks, and Democrats. And I cannot argue with that. I love that. Once again, though, going back over to the Minidoka County Senior Center, anybody that knows when they're playing bingo, let me know because I've had calls on it. Let's see if this one knows. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Well, I know very little, but I know I think it's going to be a weekly thing. What day? Isn't it Friday night? Well, I don't know because it doesn't say on this list. It just said for March 1st. Now, I didn't say anything more, and I've had people call and say, I've got all my bingo equipment. When are they going to play bingo? And then I go, I don't know. It it starts tonight, or starts Friday night, March 1st, and I think it's going to be every Friday night. Well, that was last Friday night. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, welcome to the calendar. (laughs) I need to look down the line on my calendar, don't I? <laughs> You're the guy that lost the 39 Black Hawk helicopters. <laughs> I know, and I still haven't found them. Okay. I've been looking. Well, I, I still, I'm amazed at that story because I can't understand how. I know it. But you think it's every Friday night. If you find out any different, let me know. Will do. All right. And you're in charge of all the information. And uh, if you don't uh, do your job, we'll find somebody else and pay them much more money. Double my money. Right? <laughs> okay, Doug. Thanks a lot. Okay. All right, buddy. Hey, listen, don't forget our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, as we've had the last 15 minutes of really not too much uh, information. But uh, don't forget a big spring tire sale. This is the information that you need. It's going on right now at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Big spring tire tire sale. Oh, you can save a pretty good pocket full of money on the best of tires. Eclipse, Ultra Z900, the Open Country HT, the Open Country AT2, all of these and more. All the different tread designs, all the sizes for all the vehicles at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. We're also the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. Wow, they really want you to drive safely. I'll stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The very, very best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. <clears throat> Excuse me for losing my voice this morning. Uh, got some interesting, interesting people coming up next Monday on the program you don't want to miss. We've got Richard Manning coming on again. We've got the Pacific Legal Foundation. They're going to be talking about a case that they're representing where some people that were wearing T-shirts were told to go strip the T-shirts off immediately. They did not. Maria Espinosa is going to be on the air. And then our Idaho legislative update, Scott Bedke, Speaker Bedke, is going to be on the program next week. Caller, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Then i got to go real quick. Every Friday, doors open at 5.30. That was quick, and you did very well, sir. Keep your job. Go have a candy bar. See you later. Do I get double my pay? Thank you for your call. (laughs) See you, Doug. 
I got to run. Next Monday, we'll be back here at 806. God bless you and your family, where we always say the way things were, the way things ought to be, and the world needs more cowboys. Let's all make America great again. God bless.